report and we thought that it would be a good idea to uh, start the day with an overview of what's going on at the Eclipse Foundation around IoT. And for those of you who don't necessarily know what the Eclipse Foundation is, uh, well, you know Linux Foundation, you know the Mozilla Foundation, maybe the Apache Software Foundation. We are one of those uh, open source foundations that help companies and individuals be successful with open source software. So essentially we provide a, a vendor neutral um, body that helps, uh, well, to this day uh, there will be uh, more than 350 projects and more than 270 uh, companies collaborate on open source software, right? There's like Putting a project on GitHub is one way to do open source. Uh, when you start being more serious about possibly doing um, and building a business around uh, your, uh, your open source project, you may want to get some clear governance uh, in terms of like what does it mean to collaborate uh, on the project, to, to share and to um, co-own the, the roadmap, basically. So providing this uh, platform, if you will, for, for projects to, to, to collaborate is what we do. And so we've been around for uh, more than 15 years, and we, we're a pretty small team. We, uh, we are about 30, um, 30 people, many of us being here this week uh, in Ludwigsburg for EclipseCon Europe. So if you want to, uh, to learn more about what we do, uh, come, and, come and find us. And yeah, we, we do lots of open source in, in many um, areas. IoT is one, uh, embedded software modeling. You may know Eclipse as the, the, the Java IDE. We have lots of um, stuff in the IDE space for C, C++ development, Java, cloud-based development. And uh, yeah, to, to, to my point earlier, it's essentially the Eclipse Foundation, just like, again, other um, op open source foundations, uh, the goal is really to provide a framework, a, a legal framework for companies and individuals to collaborate on open source. Um, I think many of you have uh, at one point uh, or the other contributed to an open source project. Uh, you know that licenses are not necessarily always the, the, the easiest thing to, to understand and contributor agreements, etc. What does it mean to share intellectual property and to, to collaborate on, on open source um, software? Um, what does it mean to build um, a community around your open source project? Again, GitHub. Uh, Twitter, whatever, uh, you can certainly uh, grow a community on your own, uh, but if you, if you really want to sort of scale, uh, you, you can get help from um, like, uh, an open source foundation. We help organize and co-organize events, just like the Smart Home Day today, and that really helps grow the community around, um, uh, around your open source um, uh, project. We provide the infrastructure, what does it mean to have the resources to that you need uh, on a day-to-day -day basis to like, things like mailing lists and forums and um, continuous integration uh, machines, servers. So these kind of, uh, of, of services we provide to, to our members. And um, in, the, in the field of IoT, again, we are really active. Uh, and companies like Bosch, like Red Hat, like Dutch Telecom, they, like, you may not know that, uh, I mean, maybe for Dutch Telecom you do, uh, but many of those companies, they actually have open source at the heart of their um, open source uh, IoT, uh, of their uh, IoT strategy. And um, yeah, for them, a growing, a growing a community is, is critical. And uh, this is um, a quote from Stefan from, uh, from, from Bosch Software Innovations. And uh, I think that reflects the, the um, the, um, uh, the strategy of many other companies. Essentially, there's, you have Azure IoT, you have uh, AWS IoT, you have maybe a bunch of other uh, platforms and m many others, probably hundreds of others. In 10 years time, it's very likely that there will be lots of consolidation in the IoT uh, platform space, just like we've seen consolidation in, uh, I guess, the, the good old internet space. And today the internet runs on open source. So um, what companies like Bosch, Red Hat, and Dutch Telecom, what they think is that the future of IoT essentially is going to be uh, open source. Yes, there's room for uh, commercial platforms as well, but innovation really happens through, uh, through open source. Um, yeah, so what, what, what do we do at Eclipse IoT? Uh, Eclipse IoT is a community, if you will, uh, and a working group in the uh, at the Eclipse Foundation, where companies and individuals collaborate on 
building and creating all the technology that's needed for an open source uh, sort of end-to-end -end, uh, Internet of Things. And beyond the technology, and to my point earlier, we also uh, aim at like, building a community and, 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 and do whatever it takes to educate developers around what, uh, what open standards are relevant, what, uh, what can be achieved when all the, or at least most of the pieces of your IoT architecture are open source, and what does it mean to, uh, to, to build value and to compete on, on top of those open source uh, building blocks. So Eclipse IoT uh, started in 2010, 2011, so we've been around for a while. At the time, uh, we were talking about machine-to-machine, uh, -machine, actually, not necessarily um, IoT just yet. And so seven, eight years down the road, we were at a point where we have uh, close to three million lines of code uh, across 37 different projects. So obviously, Eclipse Smart Home is one, but there's lots of uh, other areas where we are pretty active, and we will see that um, in, in just a few slides. Like Kai said, I think the morning sessions won't be that technical, and my, my session is certainly not very technical, but I want to give you an overview of the, the projects that we have. Uh, a huge community, and probably uh, among those 350 uh, plus contributors, uh, I guess I should have looked it up um, at, um, before this talk, but I'm pretty sure it's over 100 that come from uh, the, the smart home uh, community, uh, and many other areas are also very active. Uh, and we do lots of promotion of the um, the technology portfolio and, and of what we do and um, yeah our uh, various web channels have a pretty decent um, uh, traffic. So this would be our uh, member companies, 42 I think uh, to, to this day and I will um, go into more, more details with regards to the sort of the typical uh, profiles if you will of the kind of companies uh, that get involved just to get give you a sense of why companies essentially decide that they want to do, to join the, the, the IoT, the Eclipse IoT initiative. Um, a few slides about the technology and some uh, name dropping, I guess, uh, with regard to the, the kind of uh, projects that we have in our portfolio. And those projects uh, would typically, uh, I think you, you're probably familiar with this uh, sort of architecture, if, even if you use maybe different terminology for, uh, for different um, aspects, but in general, an IoT solution will, um, will have some constrained um, remote devices, usually your um, sensors and your actuators, gateways that help provide the, the connectivity and the edge processing uh, capabilities, and obviously the cloud where you store your data, where you uh, manage your inventory, etc. Uh, uh, some topics like security, um, semantics, um, tools and SDKs are probably more uh, sort of across the, uh, the board. Constraint devices. Um, so let me get this um, uh, straight. This is not necessarily our focus at Eclipse IoT. I guess for you in the room, uh, when you talk devices, uh, you don't, you even don't even think about building your own uh, constrained device and sensor. You get off-the-shelf um, uh, home automation equipment, anyways. But for those folks who uh, need to build their own uh, constrained battery-powered uh, devices, they still need some. Uh, uh, support, like in terms of real-time operating system, um, protocols like Bluetooth and 6 low pan and whatnot. So what's available uh, out there in open source to, to do just that? There's a lot, like there's lots of open source uh, projects already available, uh, like real-time operating systems that have IoT um, um, support, like in terms, again, of protocols, etc. So ARM Embed, Amazon FreeRTOS, uh, Zephyr from Intel, um, and like there, there are great solutions. Uh, the thing that's uh, interesting actually is that although Eclipse IoT is not necessarily providing like a full stack for constrained devices, 
those um, uh, third-party uh, operating systems, they actually reuse some of the stuff coming out of Eclipse, like our MQTT uh, embedded implementations, for example, with the Eclipse PAHO project, our device management stack with um, Eclipse Wakaama for the lightweight M2M protocol. Um, so, I mean, Eclipse IoT still has some um, technology that's relevant in, in the area. Gateways, so this is where you take sensors, uh, industrial equipment, uh, cars, whatever, and you bridge them to, to the internet. So Eclipse Cura is a really um, like powerful sort of generic framework, I guess, as opposed to smart home, uh, that allows to provide an application framework for um, for building your gateway. So it provides all the um, uh, like all the network management capabilities. When you build an IoT gateway, usually you uh, you don't mind if the gateway also provides you with like a firewall, the ability to, to set up Wi-Fi hotspots and that kind of stuff. So Cura certainly does that, but it also provides a framework that allows you to, um, well, to basically uh, create your own applications uh, that can be managed remotely and uh, the applications will talk um, Bluetooth, um, OPC, UA, Modbus, whatever, and, and, um, and can be anything. It's not like there's um, a strong... Uh, framework like um, um, the development framework like there is in smart home but it's actually um, on purpose the, the the framework is really really generic another gateway framework is eclipse smart home and this is where i just go out of the room and i just leave it to you guys uh, to today to to learn more about smart home if you don't already but uh, of course smart home is another great um, uh, gateway solution that we have um, in the eclipse iot portfolio and last but not least, the cloud, and this is an, an area where we're pretty strong and really active um, uh, these days. What do you need for a, an IoT cloud? Uh, what, what is specific to IoT in, in a cloud platform? Like when you talk cloud, you suddenly uh, want to store data, you, you want to uh, maybe have some kind of uh, web, uh, web interfaces and dashboards, but things that are really IoT specific or uh, for example, the, the, the device connectivity. How do you ingest data in your um, IoT backend in a way that's um, sort of agnostic of what protocol you use? Some of you might be familiar with MQTT, but MQTT is just one, right? There's also uh, legacy devices out there that might be talking HTTP, some other devices that um, plan on sending data using FTP, that kind of stuff how from a cloud uh, perspective and from uh, even more so from an application uh, developer point of view, how do you make sure that when you build your smartphone application or whatever is your end user application, you don't want to worry about how to effectively interact with the devices. So Hono, uh, Eclipse Hono provides just that, the equivalent of the Azure IoT Hub or whatever uh, AWS calls the, the, the equivalent of this uh, yeah, generic connectivity layer. Another important aspect of an IoT cloud is all things device management. When you have devices in the field, how do you make sure that they are up to date? How do you make sure that if you have a, a bug or a security issue that you want to fix, you can uh, efficiently roll out um, your software upgrade. If you have thousands of devices, rolling out the software upgrade might actually be challenging because um, if you have, say, a 100 megabyte um, uh, firmware, you don't want to push this firmware to all your thousands of devices at the same time. It will kill your network. You will be at risk of breaking your device all at the same, your devices all at the same time if there is a yet another bug in that particular firmware. So all the, the intelligence for rolling out uh, software, for figuring out uh, your device inventory, what kind of um, version of software you are running, uh, is in the scope of Eclipse Hogbit and Eclipse Leshan, more specifically for devices that use the lightweight M2M protocol. Digital Twin, how do you have a cloud API that's uh, a representation and that's reflecting the capabilities of your actual devices and provide you with a way to, um, to interact with the devices no matter whether they are effectively accessible at a given point in time or not. Uh, think about, I don't know, a, a light bulb. When you talk to the light bulb um, uh, API in the cloud, you want to switch on and off. 
but the light bulb might not actually be connected at that very point in time. So the cloud API needs to uh, allow you to uh, set basically a desired state for the device. Um, and whenever the device comes online, um, your digital twin stack will reconcile the state of the physical twin with the, uh, its digital uh, counterpart. So Eclipse Dito does just that. And so, like I said, lots of name dropping. You can certainly do uh, some research if you want to learn more about the projects. Those are microservices, right, if you will, for building your IoT cloud. At some point, you need integration. And that's what the Eclipse Kapua platform provides. So think about, uh, well, the equivalent of the kind of interface you would have in Azure or AWS that federates all your different microservices. Uh, Kapua does just that, so provides a, a web dashboard, provides integrated set of APIs. Um, and all of the above runs um, on Kubernetes, uh, on Cloud Foundry, like all kinds of uh, paths that you would find um, out there. So, uh, and I don't have my watch. Um, how long do I have left? Five minutes, sounds good. Um, so that's for the technology. And again, uh, iot.eclipse.org or Google is your um, uh, best friend if you want to learn more about, about the projects. I said I would be spending um, some time on, on our uh, ecosystem and the kind of uh, companies that get involved. So we have the likes of Bosch and Siemens who like when you talk about billions of devices, well, they are producing billions of sensors, like literally. So for them, uh, open source uh, software and open standards are really a way to provide and to achieve interoperability, uh, especially in the, in the realm of Industry 4.0, right? All across the supply chain, um, it's actually important that uh, all the all the people and companies involved share the same standards, share the same way to expose um, and exchange um, sensor data so that uh, we can really well, achieve what, uh, what uh, Industry 4.0 4 is, is aiming for, right? Uh, inter interoperability, better um, uh, like safety, and, and, and just, just in general being able to, uh, to, to collect m meaningful data. Software vendors like Red Hat, uh, Canonical, Influx Data, they package Eclipse IoT software. Um, like there are uh, like snaps, for example, for for OpenHub, or there are um, um, distros that 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 will provide commercial support for some of the Eclipse IoT projects. So for companies like um, like like these ones, uh, they really want to to showcase their expertise and why their commercial uh, solutions are maybe better than others and do better than um, um, vanilla open source solutions. So um, they get engaged through uh, test beds, for example, and they demonstrate uh, how their stuff, um, uh, like how they build on top of open source. Um, hardware vendors like Sierra, Samsung, Intel, they, uh, they want to have good solutions to, to, to provide a way to manage remotely and, and keep um, uh, their uh, modules and their hardware up to date. So device management standards like Lightweight M2M, they promote um, reference implementations um, that are being developed at Eclipse. Uh, telcos like Orange or Deutsche Telekom, obviously getting into the smart home space is, is important because it means that they can uh, like provide more, more value to the, to the consumers, like in terms of maybe DSL or cable boxes that have uh, home automation capabilities, um, uh, system integrators and IT services companies, obviously they want to, to showcase their, their expertise. We do research projects as well, so this is also a way, uh, like Eclipse, Eclipse IoT is a way for those um, research communities to have, uh, to disseminate the results of their, um, of their research um, projects. And um, two, uh, two more slides about what we do and basically the, the programs that we have for our community, our, the companies that are involved, but also the individuals. Uh, I guess the first row is more for uh, individuals or at least for people, uh, for people rather than for, for companies. Uh, the Virtual IoT Meetup, if you don't know um, the Virtual IoT Meetup, you probably know meetup.com and you've uh, attended some, some meetup in person. 
our virtual IoT meetup is webinars that webinars that we organize um, every two weeks with um, IoT experts. So just um, uh, subscribe to our meetup and, and uh, watch out uh, and, and look out for f future um, uh, webinars. The Open IoT Challenge. Every year, we um, uh, we have some some sponsors that help us put together a nice um, prize pool. And um, the goal, basically, um, uh, of the challenge is we we ask people to build cool IoT projects on top of open source um, uh, and on top of Eclipse IoT. So we are just opening the Open IoT Challenge uh, this year's Open IoT Challenge this week. So if you guys uh, are building really cool stuff on top of Smart Home and Open Hub, you may want to, to, to apply. And if you have any uh, questions, uh, we can certainly talk more uh, today about uh, your, your ideas and whether um, uh, with, um, uh, I think it's, it's a good idea. For example, the developer survey, we, we ask people um, what they do in IoT, and you can check out the result, uh, results of this year's survey, uh, like basically what programming languages people use, what protocols. And then we have things that are more um, aimed at showing what uh, you can do with Eclipse IoT. So certainly the marketplace, where uh, I know some of you are probably uh, showcasing um, uh, Eclipse Smart Home and Open Hub plugins, test beds that are uh, a way for companies to showcase how, uh, for a particular vertical, for a particular scenario, what does it mean to use open source in the first place? Like, I, I want to build a real uh, like commercial solution. Uh, open source sounds a bit scary because it's like unmaintained, uh, like at least in, in, in appearance, unmaintained software. How can I build my solution with open source? Where should I, where should I start? What uh, companies can help me with commercial uh, support and expertise? That's what we showcase uh, through our test beds. So we have two as of today. I would love to, to have more. So if you have um, ideas in, the, in that area, we should certainly talk more. And last slide is uh, what's coming next. And um, like, there's a lot happening. Fog computing is only an area where uh, we will see more and more uh, projects and activities, essentially blurring the line between edge computing and gateway, gateways and the cloud, and having a more um, um, uh, versatile way to, to manage um, payloads, uh, if you will, and containers for um, like doing image recognition and video analysis and storage. What if all those um, capabilities could be uh, anywhere, really? And that's what Fog Computing is all about. And depending on the capabilities of your gateways or your cloud platform or, or your constraint devices, you can have um, software running anywhere in this fog, really. Um, some interesting things happening around industrial IoT with new uh, standards uh, like uh, spark plug for uh, bringing MQTT uh, to the next level in terms of industrial automation. Um, and last but not least, deep learning for j and I think that might be interesting for um, a home automation crowd. Uh, some of you may be using things like maybe TensorFlow for um, analyzing uh, and figuring out what all the data that you're collecting is all about. Uh, with Eclipse Deep Learning 4J, you have a Java equivalent to that, and so you can train uh, models and maybe do, um, I don't know, like recognize some patterns in the way you use your, uh, your electricity at home or in the way uh, you are, um, I don't know, consuming your, your, your hot uh, water. Check out Deep Learning 4J, there's lots of examples and it's uh, actually compatible with models that you may have trained with uh, other um, uh, competing solutions like TensorFlow. And with that, that was my uh, short, fast, quick introduction to Eclipse IoT. I'm obviously here all day and all week, so I'm, I'll be happy to chat more if you have any questions. Thank you.